I get people like Jeremiah asking me this type of stuff all the time. Why do you rely on the Bible so much? Surely you know there are much older religions out there other than the white man's Christianity. African Americans believed in something else before the white man gave them Christianity, you know. Other cultures have been practicing their spiritual beliefs like voodoo way before the Bible was ever written. Okay, Jeremiah, okay. I'm fully aware of other religions that predate the formation of the Hebrew Israelites. It is this very reason I use the Tanakh as my spiritual foundation. Out of all the other religious practices, the Bible is the only text that recognizes all the other religions being practiced on earth. Before the Hebrews start yelling blasphemy, tearing up their clothes and picking up rocks, let me explain what I mean. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 14. Quote, When thou come into the land which Yah thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn and do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be formed, found among you any of them that maketh their son or daughter pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or the observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or consulted with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that do these things are an abomination to Yah. And because of these abominations, Yah doeth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with Yah thy God, for these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times and to, to dividers. But as for thee, Yah thy God has not suffered thee to do so. Let's go to one more now. One more Jeremiah. We're going to go to Joshua 23, 9 through 6. Quote, Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the names of their gods, nor cause to be swear by them, but cleave unto Yah your God, as ye have done unto this day. For Yah has driven them out from before you, great nations and strong. See, J Jeremiah, I understand you guys were great nations and strong. Yes. But as for you, no man has been able to stand before you until this day. Example. As you can see, the rest of the nation's religions and practices were acknowledged by the Creator, but he did not want his people to do what the rest of the nations were doing. Nothing is new under the sun, and the core beliefs and practices of every religion under the sun, but one, was founded either in this region or with the principles just mentioned. He warned the Israelites beforehand that they were going into a land where the aboriginal people were off into some really heavy-duty stuff, their religious practices. And it was for this reason they were displaced. All throughout the pages of the Tanakh, we see how the other nations were decking fir trees with silver and gold, standing on top of mountains as the sun rose, they recite, He is risen, or meditating in caves to invoke spirit guides, etc. But the Most High suffered me not to do those type things. Remember me saying all but one religious practice is mentioned in the Bible? I refer to, I am referring to Islam. The reason I single Islam out is because it is the newest religion on the block and conceived much later than when the books of the Bible were being compiled into one. That brings me to their white man statement and why I'm so bewildered at you Africans and so-called African-American Muslims and their offshoot more doctrines. They misunderstand and reject the Tanakh for being the white man's book, not realizing Muhammad was a pure Ottoman Turk. Sure, there are no images of him, but if the Quran says his armpits, arm, thighs, face, and feet were white, what color do you think the rest of his body is? It's like they were jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. Go figure. They reject the white man's Christian name, given name, white man's Christian given name, out of rebellion, only to change it to another white man's name. They reject the white man's language, yet painstakingly learn another white man's dialect. Do you truly believe Arabic was the language of the Aboriginal Northern African spoke? That is where you believe your ancestors are from, right, Moors? The name Ali, Muhammad, or any other Turkish-ass name wasn't even thought of in the lands you think you was originated from until the white man's caliphs forced them under the blade of his knife to convert. The Moors furthered the affliction by not only adopting one aspect of the white man's name, Ali, Muhammad, etc., 
but found it necessary to add the title of the white man's position within the white man's community to their name. According to Wikipedia under Bey, quote, Bey is a Turkish title for chieftain, traditionally applied to the leaders of a small tribal groups, etc. What? The white man ain't the devil no more? Timothy Drew, uh, excuse me, Noble Drew Ali, was born in hot-ass South Carolina and was taught in the ways of the Shriners, white Turkish Bahamians, and the Order of the Rosencrucians, and the books of the Aquarian Gospels of Jesus. All of their doctrines, dress, and supposed scientific knowledge spring from these four fountains of deception. Am I the only person that finds it strange that Shriners who mimic the Arabian style and the modern Moors wear the same fez cap and basically have the exact same doctrine? I have researched many images of the original Moors of Morocco and contrary to popular pop culture, they originally wore turbans, not a fez. They use the same vocabulary, like words, like noble, etc., just like the Shriners. Heck, Elijah Muhammad admitted he was a mason before Malachi Z. York, a New Obian, another total wacko, told him, quote, the truth. That's in his book. All of these so-called African-American religion leaders were so intertwined with their chaos, one teaching another, it is hard to tell when one begins and the other one ends. I believe this is the reason and the spirit Louis Farrakhan is operating under by giving his power unto the beast and turning his followers over to Scientology. Besides all this, Muslims, Arab, white, and black alike claim of spiritual authenticity to the Quran is oxymoron at best. Let me explain. As we will find out later, there has never been a mutation, alteration, or clarification classified as being pure or unadulterated. Anything taken from the original source cannot be considered original. Seeing the Quran is not only used not only uses most of the book of Genesis as its beginning, it also mentions the Christians and the Jews by name. Using this simple logic alone will lead the same man to conclude the Quran, and it is not the Bible, the Tanakh, Old Testament, should be considered a corruption slash alteration of the overall story, thus making their claims of being pure oxymoron. Given the chance of having multiple sources culminate into one main seamless text that obliterates the law of compound probability in its accuracy of past, present, and easily foreseen future events against a text, I'm talking about the Quran, that has one author which renders any sort of check and balance of the scriptures null and void, I pick the compilation. I don't want to say too much to piss these Islam brothers off. They have already proven they'll march through your hood with a million mother suckers. So I'll end with this. Remember me just saying the core belief and practices of every modern religion foundation was practiced by the aboriginal inhabitants already? If I can recall the story correctly, before Mr. Muhammad's conversions, there used to be 359 lesser intermediary gods, which represent the number of degrees in a circle, some sacred geometry stuff, Surrounding the Kaaba stone with the moon god being number 360 and the chief lord of the Kaaba. Question, what is the difference between that and let's say the Greek, Roman, Hindu, Etruscan, or especially the Canaanite pantheons of that day? Nothing. Okay, so one day Mr. Muhammad was meditating in a cave when he was approached by an angel and told what to write down everything that was said. Am I right? Okay, let's keep going. He was told to go and tear down the rest of the intermediary gods and pray to the Lord of the Kaaba only. First question, what does that sound like to you? It sounds like Eastern mysticism and modern day yoga meditating practices to me. The internet is littered with websites that promote meditation and spirit guides that will assist you in your quest for spiritual knowledge. It doesn't hurt my case, the Ottoman Empire is just east of where this practice originated. The angel that spoke to Muhammad will start to sound more and more like a spirit guide if you dwell just a little deeper. Second question, did you notice earlier that I said, especially the Canaanite pantheon? I said it like that because when you build a house on mutated scripture, any little old wolf can come and blow it down. Case in point, the Muslims have been led to believe 
Allah and El of ancient times were not only the same God, but that El was the name of the Holy One of Israel too. Both of these assumptions are easily proven false. Huff and puff. Their misconception of perception begins with the idea of the Arabic word for God is Allah, when in fact it is a contraction of al Ilya, which means chief God. The correct generic Arabic word for God is Ilya. That's Surah 573. Four, Surah 5 and 73. I tell you what, I, I, don't, I don't know how to uh, 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 do this Arabic stuff, but the translation is, there is no God but Allah. Tell one of them to write it down. Tell one of them to write it down. You will see the difference. Allah is a proper name. Blowing the house down. Their misconception continues with the idea El and Allah were the same God, but going under a different name, thus proving the Muslims and Israelites were praying to the same God after all. The truth be told, El is not the God of the ancient Israelites at all. He was the chief God of the Canaanite pantheon. According to the Illustrated Dictionary and Concordance of the Bible under El Elyon, quote, El is the proper name of the sky God in the Canaanite pantheon. And Elyon is, is evidently a distinct and associated deity, though here the two appear as a compound name. The Hebrews later adopted the linguistic language of El to mean God of the Most High. Example, the Israelites abominably, might I add, applied the name El to mean Yah. Much later, due to this the fact, they lived dead smack in the middle of the Canaanites. It's the same thing as the Christians calling him Lord today. But wait! To further the affliction, Jeremiah, in the pantheon law of El, guess who his son is? According to Wikipedia under El, deity, quote, The bull was symbolic to El and his son, B-A-A-L, Hadad. And they both wore bull horns on their headdresses. He may have been the desert god at some point, as the myths say that he had two wives and built the sanctuary with them and his newborn children. In the desert, El had fathered many gods. What? Let me say that again. El had fathered many gods, but most important were B A A L God, Yam, and M O T. I don't know. Example. No, the scholarly evidence at hand proves, not my evidence, black people don't write books like this. Allah is not the same God as the Tanakh. He is exactly what he always was, the chief God of the ancient Turkish pantheon. Nothing more, nothing less. Last thing, what do you think the odds of the Turkish Empire surrounding armies, which are Israelites, and the increasing converted Gentile Christians throughout Asia, basically consolidating under the banner of one God and Mr. Muhammad not follow suit to solidify his own kingdom. In my humble opinion, this is the reason he, excuse me, the angel, obviously went out of their way to chastise the, the Turks' most formidable enemies all throughout the Quran by name. I can also see the mechanism behind the greatest differences between the Muslims and the Christians the death of the person the world calls Jesus. Mr. Muhammad understood the power in Christianity was in his death and the belief of resurrection. It would only be natural, I mean, it would only be a natural defense to reject the enemy's strength and go polar opposite. Hence, he got down from the cross. What person got down from a cross that the Romans are standing right there? Golly! But let's keep going. Looking at it from an analytical strategic standpoint, it sounds more like a piece of rival literary work for survival than authentic dictation from an authentic higher power. <laughs> Let me read that last one again. Looking at it from an analytical strategic standpoint, it sounds more like a piece of rival literary work for survival than authentic dictation for authentic higher power, from an authentic higher power. That's it. That's it. I love the electric company and Sesame Street. Well, all right, Jeremiah and company, I'm waiting on your reply. <laughs>